to think of my fondest gaming memories from my childhood, the ones that come to mind probably aren't what you'd expect. You might think it would be buying my first game with my own money, or getting a really exciting release for my birthday, but to be honest, I hardly ever remember what games I got as gifts, let alone what my first game ever was. No, the ones I remember the most are just me holding the box, reading the blurbs on the back, and thinking about when I would get to play it. Whether it was once I got home from EB Games, or when I finally got back to my computer after Christmas Day festivities. I have recollections about a lot of my favourite games in situations like those, such as Mass Effect, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, Impossible Creatures, and you guessed it, Stronghold. It was winter in the mid 2000s, and while visiting family in southern New Zealand, I brought Stronghold on a recommendation from a friend. I couldn't wait to get home to play it. It was a long week, but on the night we returned home, I threw the disc into my old Windows XP desktop and began my journey into the medieval world of quote-unquote, the original Castle Sim. While I first played the game around 13 years ago, the game had been released four years before that in 2001, by the UK-based developer Firefly Studios as their debut title. A commercial and critical hit, Stronghold had sold nearly 1.5 million copies before I ever laid my hands on it, and its success allowed Firefly to develop a plethora of sequels in the years since. Unfortunately, None except for the excellent Stronghold Crusader had managed to recapture the magic of the original, though you could maybe make an argument for both Stronghold 2 and Stronghold Crusader 2 for being pretty good. As with many RTS games in the last wee while, Stronghold was fortunate enough to receive an HD re-release for modern systems, which included support for high definition monitors, Steam cloud saves, and a functional if a little janky online multiplayer via the third party Game Ranger software. But despite all that, Refreshing an old game for the modern day doesn't inherently mean you should bother booting it up again. So, with all that being said, should you play Stronghold in 2018? At its core, Stronghold plays kind of like every other RTS you've played in the last 20 years. You start with a few townsfolk, a building or two, and you're tasked with building your castle and managing your economy while carving a path to victory. But where Stronghold differs itself is in its mechanics and minute details, which sets it apart from most of its contemporaries both at the time of its release and even today. The best way to cover everything is by starting at the beginning, which is when you place your keep. The keep in Stronghold is similar to something like the town centre in Age of Empires, but unlike that, you can only have one and it can't be destroyed. It's the focal point of your power, a stone fortress that looks over your domain. The purpose it serves is also slightly different. It doesn't recruit villagers or conduct research, instead it acts as a gathering point for new civilians moving to your castle, a mechanic that is a key differentiator in what makes Stronghold unique. Your population works on a popularity system. If the people who live at your castle like you, you'll get a constant influx of new residents until you reach your population cap, which is determined and managed by the number of hovels you have for them to live in. On the contrary, if people don't like you, they will begin to leave, and they're not going to come back until you make things better for them. Your popularity is determined by a multitude of factors, such as the amount of tax you charge, how many rations you give, or how many alehouses you open. And you can use these to your advantage. For example, if your food production is booming and you just really need some gold, just tax the daylights out of your population while simultaneously doubling their rations. You'll most likely still be in their good books, you can create a sort of medieval version of the current day United States. Like gaining and losing popularity, nothing happens instantly in Stronghold. The game's attention to detail in your actions applies across all of its mechanics, whether that's collecting resources, building an army, or engaging in combat. Something that might be a bit jarring to newcomers is that you actually have no direct control over your population's actions, except for your soldiers. Instead, they will automatically fill available jobs in your castle as they become available, like when you build a new woodcutter's camp for example. While initially skeptical when I first played Stronghold, I've actually grown to really like this system. It both lowers the unimportant micromanagement drastically and makes your castle feel much more alive which is one of Stronghold's strong points. Workers will go about their days, children run around the castle, and your lord will patrol the walls like the watchful guardian that he is. You have limited control over the Lord, he's a proficient fighter and can be ordered to attack enemies or garrison in the keep, but that's about it. And if he dies, the game is lost. 
The aspect of every scenario having a lose if he dies king unit as well as having him be the strongest fighter in the game by far allows for some interesting scenarios that are really unique. Speaking of, tactics and stronghold are one of the defining features of its combat. Since resources are moved by your workers, raiding parties can be brutally effective in stopping your food and building supplies getting back to your castle, especially if they're gathered a decent distance away. All food is stored physically in your granary, so if your foe manages to destroy it, your entire castle is going to be out of food, prompting a swift exodus of your population if you can't recover your stores fast enough. But getting your resources back doesn't mean you're instantly going to have food for the population. If you've got a wheat farm that's ready to harvest, awesome. Now you need to mill that wheat into flour and then bake it into bread. And keep in mind all of the workers for these buildings need to physically walk to collect what they need. So even the act of keeping your castle fed requires some planning and strategy. All this forethought also applies to raising your army. Units aren't simply recruited like most RTSs. Instead, you first got to fashion their weapons and armor through specific buildings, and then use gold to train idle civilians. These multiple steps mean raising a force takes time, and each unit is really valuable, as they all have a very significant time and resource cost associated with creating them. Especially the stronger units like the knights, swordsmen, and pikemen. So you might be thinking that once you've fielded a decent army, the challenge is over. But you'd be wrong. While there are certainly cases when you can just crush your enemy with overwhelming force alone, Stronghold's core combat isn't about who can create the biggest army the fastest. And when you are battling, it's unlikely to be in an open field against a foe of similar strength. The more common conflicts are sieges, where you're either aiming to breach your foe's walls and kill their lord, or stop the enemy from doing the same to you. These clashes where the game's combat is at its best, where real tactics and strategy can be used to win the fight. Most of the time it's not about who's the strongest, but who's the smartest. You might have a hundred swordsmen in heavy armor ready to go, but when they get caught in a flurry of crossbow bolts from the towers above, from which they're too slow to get away from, they're not going to stand a chance. Battles are strategic, and you need to have plans to deal with all the different threats that might come your way. For example, if you want to get those swordsmen through, you're going to have to bring in some siege equipment to bring those towers down first. But it doesn't end there. Stronghold offers creative ways to defend your castle, such as hidden spike traps, war dogs, moats, and my personal favorite, pitch. Pitch can be gathered like any other resources, and then you lay it out on the fields outside your castle. Give one of your archers a flaming arrow, and he'll set the ground ablaze like he's Bron of the Blackwater. While we're on the topic of seeing things burn, now's a good time to mention that in Stronghold, fire isn't just a damage state for buildings or a fancy graphical effect. Here, fire acts as it does in the real world, indiscriminately burning anything that gets in its way. And while I'm sure you can think of your own ways to use it against the enemy whose buildings are mostly made out of wood and are often really tightly packed together, you need to be prepared to have the same done to you, or you'll be helpless as you watch the inferno turn your buildings and everyone in them to dust. To match Stronghold's in-depth mechanics, there's a multitude of modes included for you to play and test your skills. While the lack of a traditional skirmish mode against computer opponents really sucks, there are siege games that you can either play as the defender or attacker of a pre-made castle. It's a lot of fun and there is a decent amount of variety in terms of locations and ways to go about attacking and defending, but it's not quite an adequate replacement for a full-on skirmish mode. If you are itching for castle vs castle action, your best bet is probably to play with a friend online. Aside from that, there are a couple of economy based game types, like a free build mode where you can have a big open field, no enemies, and an abundance of resources where you can essentially just build the castle of your dreams. And while it sounds kinda dull, it's actually really fun, as managing your economy in Stronghold can often be a challenge in of itself. And while all the single player modes I've mentioned are fun and can eat up some time, the meat of the solo experience definitely lies in the game's military campaign. Over its 21 missions you'll find some decently varied gameplay, creative objectives and mission goals, and an easy to understand but surprisingly decent narrative to go along with it. You play as the boy, son to the advisor of the king. After trying to negotiate with a powerful lord, your father along with the king and a group of other lords were killed, which has left you with a burning desire for vengeance. After gathering troops and advisors loyal to your late father, king and cause, you work to take back your homeland, and deliver justice to those who deserve it. Huh. After reading all that out loud, it sounds a bit like the plot from Season 2 of Game of Thrones. Eh, 
Eh, I'm probably overthinking that. All in all, the campaign is surprisingly good, and even if you don't have any friends who want to play multiplayer, the value offered by the campaign and extra solo game modes are easily enough to satisfy, and it offers decent replayability to boot. Despite the game's age and dated graphics, Stronghold's audio and visual experience feels truer to its setting than any other strategy game I've played by far. Everything the game offers works towards the goal of making you feel like you're managing an authentic medieval castle, everything from its building design to game mechanics. Every resident of the council has a role to play. Some collect resources, some create weapons, some guard the walls. Stronghold always feels alive. People go about their days and do their jobs, all without you as the player needing to micromanage their every move. The sights and sounds the game offers give you a real sense of responsibility, like these are living people, and the only thing standing between them and a horrible medieval demise is you, their protector. Armourers, hammers, clang against metals, they forge swords and shields for your soldiers. Children scurry around their buildings as they play, and your loyal troops guard the walls, always on constant lookout for the enemy. Each civilian even has their own name and will greet you personally or comment on current affairs around the castle when you select them. Food, 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 I'm putting on so much weight. With these rations, you're, you're really spoiling us. Running out Stronghold's audio package is the music, which in my opinion is a perfect match to the gameplay. Peaceful tunes accompany you in times of prosperity, and jolly jigs play as your castle flourishes. But when the barbarians are at your gates, the music takes a dramatic turn. Trumpets blare, choirs chant, and drums smash, making you feel like you're attacking King's Landing at Blackwater- I really gotta stop making Game of Thrones references. While I've talked at length about how Stronghold's gameplay, graphics and audio lend to an authentic medieval feel, there are so many little things that are enclosed that I felt I need to take a minute to talk about them specifically. The attention to detail given is impressive, and it's apparent that the developers really made an effort in that respect. Like how every worker, cow and dog all get their own names, which makes everything feel a lot more personal, or how nearly every building has a charming animation that plays when you click on them, like a worker grinding wheat at the mill, or a woodcutter chopping a log at his hut. Everything just feels more real. Like I said before, it makes you feel responsible for these people's lives. You see John Smith cutting wood, or Jane Smith tanning leather, and I can tell you that I care for them a lot more than I care for Nameless Villager in Age of Empires. Little details like these even apply to the game's menus. If you have a common-ish name and use it as your profile name, the game greets you as a lord when you start it up. Greetings, Lord Luke. There's even a guy that yells saving and loading as you, well, save and load. Loading! Saving! Well, there are definitely things I'm forgetting that I'm going to kick myself later for not including. All these little details work to make Stronghold one of the richest and most detailed RT settings I've played in. As you can probably tell from watching the last 20 or so minutes of this video, I love Stronghold, and it's an easy recommendation from me to anyone who likes RTS games. Its unique approach to strategy and focus on castle life and siege warfare make it stand out amongst other games in the genre, and no other game has been able to emulate it to the same standard, not even its sequel is made by the same developer. If I were talking about the original 2001 release right now, I might not be so fast to tell you to go out and play it on a modern computer. However, with its high definition re-release on Steam, it has no problem running on even the latest hardware at the highest resolutions. It's only $6.50 to buy it, and if that's too much, it's normally only a couple of bucks when it's on sale, which is probably pretty often. The only downside compared to other RTS's re-release on Steam is that there isn't Steam multiplayer support included, so you're stuck with using Game Ranger if you want to play it with others outside of your local network. But to be fair, Game Ranger is fairly decent and it's relatively simple to get set up and running without a ton of trouble. So if you're looking for an RTS that's just a bit different from what you're used to, or you're wanting to relive the glory days of building the greatest castle the world has ever seen, 
you look no further than Stronghold. Thanks for watching everyone, see you next time.